Hi, I'm Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out Sports TV with Chris Mason. How are you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. You? I'm good, yeah. We're here to talk about Tyson Fury's big comeback fight. Well, um, it's, yeah, it's a fight. I'm not sure about how big it is, but <laughs> it's yeah, definitely it's, a comeback. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's we can narrow it down to just a comeback. Yeah, it's an interesting choice of opponent. I don't think either of us were surprised. We heard the whispers of several months ago, um, but yeah, I, what else does he do? I think I think the problem is he's reached out to the sort of social media in a way that you know he thinks he's the second coming of Muhammad Ali yet chooses to face someone you know limited opposition he probably wouldn't want to fight down my local pub to be honest but well, your local pub may be a bit rougher than yeah. mine but <laughs> June the 9th is when he's coming back we sit here less than three weeks away and the opponent's only just been announced which kind of tells its own story um Sefa Seferi so good Glad they almost that. named him twice <laughs> um not much is known about him in terms of people actually watching his fights, but he spent most of his career at Cruiserweight. Is yeah, I remember the Chara fight. That's which, what which was his one kind of foray up at heavyweight, which yeah, didn't, didn't work end out well. for him. No. I mean, he, he, he lasted rounds, you know. Yeah, Maybe I that's mean, what the, Fury's looking for. Yeah, I mean, technically he's not bad. He's, very, he's, he's not a big Cruiserweight, so he's not going to be obviously a very big heavyweight. Um, and as we know, Tyson Fury is a, a freak of nature, all six foot nine of him, incredibly long, long levers. And, and likes to box on the outside for a, so in terms of an opponent for Safiri, Safri, it's, it's a disaster. You know, it's one you wouldn't put him in with. Especially um, given recently, Fury made some comments uh, regarding a Tony Bellew fight, saying, "Well, Bellew's still basically a cruiserweight. Wouldn't really be fair. Like <laughs> I could do him some serious damage. And yeah. now he's fighting a much inferior or far and a smaller inferior guy. cruiserweight. Yeah, and he's, he's smaller. Bellew's a, a huge cruiserweight. Yeah, um, and has been campaigning at heavyweight for his last couple of fights. And, it, and it's a much bigger fight in terms of uh, of money. And probably it might not have been the negotiations wouldn't have worked out well with with Frank and, and Eddie. I suppose that would have been a stumbling block, but. You know, ultimately, yeah, it was, a, it was a strange choice. He does make some strange comments and then sort of almost backtracks. And like you said, he's now going in with the cruiserweight, which, um, yeah, I mean, he's going to carry a bit of speed and uh, hopefully a bit of mobility. And if it lasts more than sort of four or five, then, you know, there's going to be more questions than answers. Fury obviously hasn't been seen since that famous night two and a half years ago now when he deposed Vladimir Klitschko. What a fight. Ended his long reign at the top of the heavyweight division. What are we looking for from Fury in this comeback fight? What are we looking to judge him on, given the opponent isn't amazing? Yeah, I'm not too worried about the, the sort of two-year sabbatical or whatever it's going to be in two years, five months, because, you know, he's been an active fighter since 14 or 15 years of age. So really, you know, a, a fighter sometimes needs that little window to totally recover the body. And, you know, they're always carrying an injury. Any guy that fights, I tell you, they're, they're, there's always a, a niggling injury somewhere. There's always something that's you know, either a torn muscle or a, a sore, you know, where it's not quite repaired properly. And certain extracurricular activities, which yeah. is probably best to get out of his system now. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's done and dusted. You know, whatever he wanted to do, partying, drinking, going out. You know, he was traveling, go, went to America and Monte Carlo. It's all done in that the way. He's sort of got that out of his system, we hope. Um, and he does seem a, a reformed character, you know. he. You know, he's, he's very conscious about that he does have a stand in, whether it maybe not in everybody's community, but certainly in the community he's from. You know, he's got a responsibility and, and try and set a, a better example, which is, it, it appears that's something that he's actively trying to do, which is, you know, listen, uh, he's, he's great for boxing, whatever, you know, your opinion on his skill level. Um, you know, we can only judge him on, on what he does in the ring. And, and, and so far, especially the fight with Klitschko, when you when you look at the, the version of Klitschko that fought AJ and they, he went life and death with him, well, it was a pretty easy night's work when, when Fury beat him. It was it was pretty much, you know, spot on. The tactics were perfect and he'd done a job on him and, and an easy one. And Frank Warren, who promotes the comeback show, has emphasised the fact that he's not going to test Fury too you know, put him in too deep too early on this comeback. He's going to choose the opponents. They're not going to be overly challenging, but he wants to give Fury time and space to shed the rust. Do you think that's the right strategy? No, because it, say, say he blows the guy away in two minutes of round one. What's he learned? What's, yeah, where, how do we, how, you know, how can you judge yourself on, on that performance? Uh, I'd rather see him in with stiffer opposition that's going to stand up and potentially take him rounds. And you've got to think that heavyweights now are all big units. So there's no point in him. It's not like there's a Mike Tyson waiting for him down the line, you know, a, a five foot eleven, you know, bulldog of a fighter. You know, they're all sort of six five, six six, six seven. Um, and so I, I don't understand the idea of fighting someone who's, you know, barely six foot. It's it's, it's with short arms. It's a strange. It, but 
ultimately, I think he could have fought anybody, and there is still, you know, people still would buy tickets because people are fascinated by him, you know, and he uh, he does have a, a very very big following. I don't, I think this fight deal with Frank's only a three fight deal, um, and like I said, he's going to pick his three opponents, and I think hopefully he gets them done this year. Uh, I know they're on about him coming back out in September potentially to fight Shannon Briggs, which I'll be amazed if the board <laughs> passes that. Uh, not just because of his of his age and his health, he also has an eye issue. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to see where he goes after this one. I, I'd I'd like to see him step up, you know, a, a good few levels from the guy he's fighting uh, in a couple of weeks. In many ways, Fury's taking a big risk coming back because he he retired, if you like, on top, undefeated, Although, undefeated, and having come off such an amazing win against someone who's been undefeated for so long, his kind of legends taken on this almost mythical proportions now. He's the he's the deposed king in exile. Whereas as soon as he comes back and people analyse how he does, even if he does blow the guy away, yeah. surely the only way is down in people's estimations. Well, yeah, he he was a lineal champion, wasn't he? He beat the guy that reigned for ten years, uh, and he was undisputed. And now he's like you say, he's, he's starting from scratch, and he's going to be judged heavily because he's made so much noise and we've got we've got people to compare him to you know we've got wilder um you know even his brother huey obviously aj uh povetkin you know we've got so many guys at heavyweight now that are looking for a big piece of the pie i would have made the fight against david price so everybody was astounded by his performance against povetkin i didn't <laughs> quite see it myself but there we go um why not make the david price fight he's, a, he's, a, he's certainly a big name he's a, he's a big heavyweight uh, it would have sold tickets and it totally would make sense and, and people regard, you know, they, 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 are, they hold Pricey in a much higher regard than they do um, the guy he's going to be fighting, but maybe they will make that fight. So you're, say you're Sefa Seferi, if I've pronounced that right, and <laughs> if you can imagine being that person, what do you do in that fight? Do you stay on Fury's chest and plug away, use your work rate, use your relative, you know, freshness? He's, he's, in, a, he's in a no lose situation, isn't he? He's just got to go. I, I mean, personally, he should just go for it. Because, you know, you're going to catch Fury cold. He's going to try and, he's instantly going to just back up and try and keep it long. Um, and he does have a tendency to be a little bit square on and a little bit wide at times. I reckon he should just sort of pull in a china shop and have a go for two or three rounds. I think someone pointed out recently the last time Fury fought a cruiserweight, it was yeah. another occasion where he didn't have um, his uncle Peter in the corner as yes. he hasn't now. New trainer Ben Davison, he got dropped and, and yep. nearly lost to again Steve caught, Cunningham. Yeah, Steve Cunningham again caught square on. Not that we're saying Seth Sorry's anywhere near no. Steve Cunningham. He was a former uh, world champion. But again, champion. though, it was it was he was lazy. He sort of switched off and he was trying to coast and he got caught square on. And no matter who you fight, is that a big risk in this fight then? Complacency. <sighs> Because, oh, because I don't Seferi's know. I, so unknown, Fury just think he's levels above and maybe leave himself open. I know. I don't think he would take that risk. I mean, you know, I, I don't know about his financial situation, but you know, I know he didn't get paid a lot for for when he fought Klitschko, um, and everybody else would have had their piece of that pie. So I don't. I don't. Although he portrays to have plenty of money, I, I don't think he could afford to be anything but totally professional and, and absolutely switched on because if he lost to a to a guy of that level it's over you know the, the fairy tale is down the drain the safari tale yeah. you might say and <laughs> um, while we're talking about the man in the corner peter fury obviously they're not working together anymore he took him took tyson to his highest highs which so it's a bit of a shame new man's come in ben davison he's been around boxing his whole life Known mostly and, and perhaps unfairly for his time spent in Billy Joe Saunders' corner against um, Akhabov, yeah. where he didn't look at his best. What do we make of Fury making that change, and also of Ben Davison and what he can offer? Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a fresh start. It's um, uh, you know, it's just something fresh. It's new. He's learning new things. Um, you're not going to teach it. You can't teach an old dog. It's like people with the Eubank thing about getting him a trainer. He's 28. You're not going to long in the game. Yeah, it's too long. You're not going to change their styles. Uh, but I think what we have seen from the pictures is that he's, he looks in better condition. He seems in a better place. And this probably is down to having someone new around him, a new camp, new training with different types of fighters, getting to know different people uh, and just a totally different routine. And I think it will go one or two ways. If he, if he looks awful, it's going to be everybody's fault. Um, but if he looks amazing and a million dollars, they certainly won't be congratulating Ben Davidson. You know what I mean? That's the way the game works. Um, I think it looks to be a good fit. Uh, he, he seems happy. Um, you don't hear of any reports of him not being in camp, and he's lost a hell of a lot of weight, seven or eight stone. I, I think I've been told. Uh, Almost I, I'm, as much as you. Chris. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, in far <laughs> off. Uh, I, I'm, I'm fascinated to see what version of Tyson Fury is, is going to come out on Fight Night. It's going to be, 
it's, it's going to be compelling for, for many reasons as a, as a boxing fan first and foremost but you know I, I've always been a, a big fan of Fury I like his style I like, I like the way he boxes uh, it's not it's not as exciting as you know your Joshua and your um, Wilder sort of style because they're sort of all out looking for a knockout he doesn't you know he's more of a technician and I, I quite like that um, but you never know I mean you hear the stories that uh, you know, a lot of people say he doesn't punch hard, but the people he spars with, and I talk to a lot of them, they say he, he, can, he can bang. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if he, he sort of comes out with a, a different style and look for power. He's constantly said he'll, if he fights AJ, you will knock him out. So maybe maybe they, they've got something up their sleeve. Well, well, let's wrap it up. June the 9th, he's back. Hashtag he's back. Great undercard, we should point out as well, for yep. people who aren't particularly interested in the Fury fight. Although, you know, for curiosity <laughs> value alone, I think yeah. it's, it's fascinating. I'm not going to ask you who wins because I think we both agree Fury's going to win. But how how will he look and how will he win? How will he wrap? Uh, up? I think he'll get him out of there in the first half of the fight. Uh, I think he'll have a I think he'll have a cautious opening round, um, and then sort of really sort of go start, to work. yeah go to work and really start to make a, a try and make a bit of a statement. Um, what what will he learn? Not a lot. What will we learn? Not a lot. But it was just good to see the big man back out there and, and doing what he does best, and that's fight. Would anything over the halfway point be a disappointment? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can't you can't start to consider him uh, as a potential opponent for the, for the big two, Wilder or or AJ. Uh, if you, what would they do to this guy? That's that's the way you've got to look at. It. That's the way you've got to make compare. I know styles and and everything else, but uh, yeah, anything but a, a, a real good, sharp, strong looking performance and get him out inside six. Anything after that, I think there'll be more questions and answers. Well, you've heard what Chris Mason and I think. Please let us know what you think in the comments box below. And we'll look forward to June the 9th. Hashtag he's back.